You know, they made me come up here and say stuff. I just want to be singing. That's all I want to be doing. But they just won't let me. So I want to welcome everybody tonight to our night of prayer and worship. Thank you so much for coming out. We're so glad that you're here. And here's what I want to do. I just want to start the night by just sharing a verse with you. And it's actually a verse that I'm going to preach on in a couple weeks. We're preaching in Matthew, but this verse actually shows up in Matthew. Uh, Not in Matthew, but in the sermon that I have on Matthew. This is actually from Philippians. And so let me read you this verse because I think it's really fitting for tonight. It's Philippians chapter 4, and it's verses 6 to 7, but I'm just going to start with verse 6. The Bible says this, Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, and I'm talking about the situation that you walked in the door with, the one that you know about, it's the one that's been on your mind all week. That situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. present your requests yes. to God. Amen. Amen. Church, that's exactly what we're doing here tonight. Yep. We're not here to panic. We're here to pray. That's right. Come on. Hey, we're not here to worry. We're here to worship. Yep. And what we're here to do is with Thanksgiving, we're going to bring our requests to God. We're going to bring those corporate concerns that we have as a church tonight. There'll be a time for that a little bit later. We're going to bring some personal concerns that we have. Those things, those issues that you walked in the door with today. We're even going to have communion tonight. They're not letting me do it because I almost choked and died last time. (laughs) But don't worry. It's in way better hands than me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I was anxious about that. But the Lord delivered me. Amen. Listen. We don't choose to be anxious together tonight. We've chosen to gather together to pray, to petition our God. Now listen, here's what can happen because we've decided to do that. Let me tell you verse seven, Philippians four, verse seven, and the peace of God. Raise your hand real quick if you need some peace. Yes. I do, mine's high. Mine's the highest in the room because I'm kind of tall and I'm on the stage right now. <laughs> we need the peace, listen. <laughs> Get it. Sit down, sit down, sit down, Jeff. <laughs> The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. I'm going to preach on it in a couple weeks. We'll go deeper. But this will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you showed up today with any care, with any worry, with any anxiety, with any issue, what I want to encourage you to do, and there's an important way to do it, with thanksgiving. Because of all that God's done in our past, what we know he's capable of doing in the future. It might not be the answer we thought, but God is willing and able to answer it tonight. With thanksgiving, let's bring this to God and allow his peace to come over us. Are you ready for that tonight? Will you just close your eyes, bow your heads if you're comfortable doing it, and then just lift your hands if you're comfortable with that. Those of you that raised your hand already that need peace, let's go to the Prince of Peace right now. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, come in this place. Jesus, be present with us, we pray. God, we don't want that panic. We don't want the worry, God. We've come to pray. We've come to worship you. God, we've come to seek your face. We don't want to leave with the same cares that we showed up with tonight. God, we want to lay them at your feet. So I pray in the name of Jesus, the most powerful name, that you would meet every single soul here, every soul online that's joining us. God, I just pray that you would minister to the hearts of men and women in a way that only you can do, God. God, we refuse to leave until we've been touched by you. God, we're so, so desiring you, God. It's not anxiety, God. It's a passion. It's a, and it's an expectation that you're going to do what your word says you will do. So, God, I pray with joy and thanksgiving that New Day Church would seek your face. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's worship, church. Let's worship. Let's have a great night. Amen.
Yes, how we need you, Lord. Yes, how we need you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Praise you, God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, that Christ's power may dwell within me. Let's sing together.
God. Why don't you guys give your feet a rest for just a minute? Don't worry, it won't be long. We'll be right back to praying and worshiping. Uh, but what we like to do with these nights of prayer and worship, uh, among other things, is we like to make sure we take a little bit of time um, where we can go ahead and pray for you for the different things that you need specific prayer for. Uh, but what we also like to do at these nights of prayer and worship is go ahead and share with you uh, what you can be praying about for your church. We have people ask all the time, how can I be praying for you guys? And uh, this is kind of my part tonight uh, is to share that very thing. In a little bit, Lily will be up and she'll be uh, uh, leading us in a time where we can get specific prayer for anything that might be on your heart. Uh, but my part tonight is to share what you can be praying about uh, for your church. And I would like to use a little diagram, you won't be surprised, uh, to kind of share with you uh, what the need is. So this is just kind of how my brain works and how I think. And so here we go. Uh, let me share it like this. So on the left, you see our mission, right? And our mission is to make disciples. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples and baptize them and teach them to obey everything that I've commanded. And that's what we do as a church. I mean, we preach the gospel so that people can respond in faith and be saved. And then we baptize those people that get saved. And then we teach people the word of God so that they can grow spiritually and mature in their faith. I mean, that's what it means to make disciples. A disciple and that's our mission here at our church well friends that's what we have a laser focus on and that's what we give ourselves to uh, day in and day out week in and week out month in and month out and as we have been faithful to what God's called us to he has been faithful to keep sending more and more and more people uh, to our church and this is a wonderful thing but with that said what ends up happening in time is what you see in the middle we come up upon what we refer to here as limiting factors of growth, such as running out of parking spots or running out of seats. Now, for those of you who have been with us for um, several years now, not just since we've been in this building, but kind of go way back, you know that when we were at the Hall of Fame, our limiting factor of growth was seats, like we ran out of seats at the Hall of Fame. And so for a four-year period of time, we were stuck between 700 and 750 people, and we just couldn't go anymore, though people wanted to come and God kept sending people. We literally just had nowhere to put them in the seats. There, we ran out of seats. And so we said, we need to pray. We need to seek God. We need to ask him for provision. We need to get a space of our own, and we need to add more seats, more seats, more souls. So we bought this place, God provided, we bought this place, we renovated it, we turned it into a church, we started meeting here, and, and praise the Lord, over the first year's time, we grew by about 400 people. And it was awesome. But, but here's the deal. <laughs> it was awesome, but <laughs> we just ran into a different limiting factor of growth. Whereas at the Hall of Fame, we ran out of seats, Right before the pandemic here, we ran out of parking spots, especially in second and third service. Sometimes you're running 120, 130% you know, capacity uh, in the parking lot. And now, you know, COVID went and hit and all that kind of stuff. And then we had a little bit of room because they shut everything down. But hey, we've kind of moved past that now for the most part. And uh, things are gearing back up and things are getting full. And we're once again seeing, especially in second and third service, that 100 plus capacity uh, in the parking lot. So we have a limiting factor of growth right now. And it's, and it's our parking. What we've been doing to alleviate this problem and to make it so that we can reach more people with the glorious gospel of Christ is we have secured the uh, liquor store uh, parking lot. Uh, we have rented, we have leased space from the uh, very generous Presbyterian church right down the street so that we can use uh, part of their parking lot. And they've been so wonderful to us um, in that way. And so now we have staff and we have volunteers parking, uh, you know, at the liquor store for the glory of God and down at the Presbyterian church for the glory of God. And, and, and we're just doing these things and it's great and it's helping. Um, but guys, it's just a temporary fix. It, it's not a permanent solution. A permanent solution is not securing a couple extra little spots here and there to just sort of help us and limp along. A permanent solution is to go ahead and start another New Day Church location. 
And that's the very thing that we have been working on. You might be surprised to hear this, but we were working on our next location even before we got this one, because this has been the plan all along. So we have four options, and that's what, you, that's what you see on the right. We could go ahead and buy a box and renovate it. That's what we did here. This was a pool supply company, for those of you who don't know. So we could do that again. Another option is to buy land and to go ahead and build on it, and that's an option. A third option, as you'll see there, is, is a lease option. We could kind of do a, for, a storefront deal, lease some space, do a little build out, make the space work for what we need and use it as a church, and that's an option. And then finally, fourthly and finally, uh, we could do portable church again. Again, for those of you who haven't been with us uh, since our beginning, since our inception when we started with eight people, um, we rented space at the Longmeadow Community Center. We were a portable church there. Then we rented space at what was the Crown Plaza uh, Hotel right here in Enfield off of exit 49. Now it's got a different name, but uh, Fairfield Inn, whatever it is. Uh, and then we went to the Basketball Hall of Fame and we were a portable uh, church there for eight years. And, and the fourth option is just to do that again. Um, Guys, we are simultaneously exploring all four options because all four options are viable options. All four options would help us to continue to spread the glorious gospel of Christ and to start more churches. And so we've been exploring all four of these options. Uh, you guys don't see it. We don't talk about it a ton um, other than at these nights of prayer and worship. Uh, but we just work every single week. We have a four-hour meeting dedicated, our directional leadership team, just working on what is our next step to start our next location? What is our next step to start our location? Um, and we just work so hard at this. So we've been exploring all four of these options. And what we are asking is the question you see at the bottom of the slide. Where is God providing? Where God guides, God provides, all right? And so we are looking to see where is his provision, and that's the door that we plan uh, to walk through, the door of, of provision. So all of that to say, how can you be praying for your church? What I want you to pray for specifically is that God would open up the right door, is it to buy a box and renovate it? Is it to buy land and build on it? Is it to lease some space and do a build out? Is it to go portable church again? Is it some other option that we're not aware of? That's a fifth option or a sixth option or, you know, whatever. Where is God providing and, and where will he provide? And that's what I want you to, to pray about. And so I'm going to ask at this time, if you would uh, be so gracious, uh, would you join me? and just asking God to, to provide. To start a second location, you do understand we have to have a second location, right? And so that's what we're praying to God for uh, tonight. This is our corporate prayer uh, request. So join with me, would you? Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you that we don't have to come before you uh, timidly. As Esther did when she went before her king, to make a request. She was, she was timid. She might be struck dead. God, thank you that we don't have to come before you uh, like that. God, thank you that we don't have to come before you um, as the uh, high priest did in the Old Testament, timidly for fear that we would be struck dead uh, because of our sinfulness before a holy God. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the righteousness that we have because of him. Thank you for the right standing that we have with you because of him. Thank you that because of him, we can approach the throne of heaven. We can come into your presence. The veil's been torn. We can enter in the holy of holies. We can come before you with confidence, not with fear, with, with boldness, not being afraid because you're our loving heavenly father. And father, you've sent us as you've sent Jesus, so Jesus has sent us into this world to bring the glorious good news that there's forgiveness of sins through faith in Christ. And God, it's very much our desire to share that good news with as many people as possible before we die. God, it's our desire to invest our time and to invest our talent and to invest our treasure towards the end of having as many people as possible hear about and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And God, we've been working hard. God, like Jesus, we could say we've been busy about our Father's business. 
God, we know that it's your heart to seek and to save the lost. We know that the Lord is not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. And God, that's what we want. And God, we've been working towards that end. And as you see, Lord, we're filling up like we did at the Hall of Fame. We're filling up here. And it's a good problem to have, but Lord, you know it's still a problem. And God, I know that you're not done with us. I don't believe that for one second. I know there's more people uh, to be reached. There's more people who need to go to heaven. There's more people who need to hear about Jesus. So God, we come before you today knowing that we're not having to twist your arm to do something you don't want to do. God, we know that this is the number one thing that you want to do. We know we're praying in accordance with your will. So God, nevertheless, you tell us to bring our needs before you. So God, we do that out of obedience, not to petition you so that you'll do something that you don't want to do. God, we just, we come before you because you've told us to. And so God, that's what we do tonight. We come before you with our needs. And God, we we just lay them before you. God, we just pray that you would open up the right door for us. God, we we don't know which way to go. But God, we're kind of like that Old Testament king who said, I don't know what to do, but Lord, my eyes are on you. And God, that's us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So God, we just pray that you would provide. We pray that you would lead us and guide us and direct us. God, open up a door, make it clear. And God, we will by faith walk through. We'll start another church. We'll continue to just preach the gospel. And there'll be another Jesus-loving, gospel-preaching, disciple-making church in our region. God, we know it's what you want. We're looking to you for provision. God, go ahead and make a way where there seems to be no way. God, go ahead and uh, show us what it is. Provide what we need, the people we need, the resources we need, just everything, God, so that we can be having uh, prayer meetings in multiple locations throughout this region. Just bring in the light of Jesus to the lost. God, we ask for your help and we ask for your glory. And God, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue to worship. You can sit, you can, whatever you feel comfortable with. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so.
is just speak the name of Jesus. But that's enough. Let's speak his name tonight in every situation. He's worthy and able. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom.
name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus
going to enter into a time of communion together. And before we get started, I just, if anyone hasn't received uh, the elements when you walked in, uh, raise your hand. We have people standing by that want to bring you some. So if you haven't received any, hold that hand up and we're going to get you some. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm John, the creative arts pastor here at New Day. I'm usually tucked away in a closet somewhere or running cable on a Sunday, but since Andrew choked last time, (laughs) they had me come out. I've hydrated up, I'm ready to go. You know, in a few days, we're gonna celebrate the 4th of July. This is a day that's been set aside so we can remember the freedoms that we enjoy as Americans. Last month, we celebrated Memorial Day, we observed Memorial Day to remember that that freedom came at a cost. And that's something to remember. It's something important to remember. I think it's important we remember those things. Because as Christians, we take communion to remember. We remember how Jesus willingly laid down his life so we could be delivered from our slavery and our bondage and experience true freedom through salvation in his name. In 1 Corinthians 11, <clears throat> excuse me, Paul records three important things that Jesus wants us to remember. The first is we're to remember his body. We read in verse 24 that on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it into pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In other words, when you eat the bread, remember what it represents, it represents his bruised and broken body on the cross. It represents the pain he endured for the forgiveness of our sins. The second thing he wants us to remember is his blood. In verse 25, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this is the cup in the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. In other words, when you drink the wine, remember that it represents his blood spilled. His lifeblood that he gave out for our forgiveness. If you're a believer tonight, this is true freedom. This is where it comes from. This freedom came at the highest price. And we didn't have to pay for it. It didn't cost us a dime. This freedom was purchased with his broken body and his shed blood. He poured it out and he gave his life as the ultimate sacrifice. That's why we do communion. That's why we remember. How could it get any better than that? But there was that one more thing. We'd remember his return. In verse 26, Jesus also said, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. This means that when we take communion, we're not just to remember Jesus' first coming where he came and died and sacrificed himself for us, for our forgiveness. We're also to remember that Jesus will one day come again. That's right. That's right. That's good. So when we take communion, we need to remember, and then we're to eat the bread and drink the wine with reverence and gratitude. 
for what Jesus has done. Thinking back on the 4th of July, the freedoms that we celebrate and remember as a nation were also purchased at a high price, but that was the blood of man. And we are grateful for the sacrifice that they laid their lives down for us. But that freedom is still fleeting. It can be taken away. But the freedom that comes with the blood of Jesus, that's eternal. It's not going anywhere. That's something to celebrate. That's something to remember. So at this time, let's remember. If you've got your elements, let's take the, blood, uh, the bread together. And let's remember as we take the bread, let's remember his body that was beaten for us. hold that cup up and we can remember the spilled blood and what that represents. His poor blood, his lifeblood that he gave on the cross that day for us. Let's drink this cup and remember. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, as we take this communion together, we remember how your body was broken and your blood was spilled for us. Lord, we are humbled by the price you paid so we can experience eternal life with you, eternal freedom, Father, from sin. Lord, we are grateful for the freedom we have as Christians, freedom that cannot be tarnished by this world and freedom that cannot be taken away by man. God, we didn't pay for it. We didn't earn it. And doesn't, we don't deserve it. But God, you freely gave it to us. Father, as we sing tonight, we worship you and we lift up your name so we may decrease and you may increase. Jesus, you are worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We are eternally grateful. Amen. Amen.
you exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask, all we can think. To Him be the praise, for He is our Prince of Peace. He is our Savior. We worship you, Jesus. Prince of Peace, perfect healer, all my life and all my
Church, aren't you glad we have a father that we can run to in our time of need? Earlier today, I was, during rehearsal, I was running to the father across the auditorium and I almost met him. Um, I got a little bit too confident, tripped and fell, but I'm okay, I'm here. And I'm here tonight to pray for all of you. I'm here to pray for your needs. I'm here to lift them up to our Heavenly Father. And in Matthew 18, 20, Jesus says that, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. There are a lot more than two or three of us here tonight. And God, he is here. He is ready for you to run to him with your burdens, with your problems, with your struggles. He's ready for you to lay them down at his throne and leave them there. He's got you. Um, and I know every single person in this room has a need. I know all of our needs are so different. We all have different struggles. We all have different lives. We all go through different things. But God is here for you. No matter what that burden is tonight, no matter what that struggle is tonight, I just encourage you to bow your head right now, close your eyes, and bring it to our Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, we are just so grateful that you are a Father we can run to, that we can go to you with our burdens, our problems, our struggles, and that you are there to bear them with us, that we don't have to carry them alone, Jesus, that you are an ever-present help in our times of struggle and in our times of need. And right now, Jesus, I bring to you the physical needs of our church. I pray for anybody that is experiencing physical sickness in this moment, for anybody that is experiencing pain. I just pray that you would take it, God, that you would take it, that it wouldn't leave this room. And we just have faith in you, Jesus. I pray for anybody in our church that may be fighting a war with cancer. I just pray for those families too, Lord God. It is so, so hard, and we can't do it without you. We need you. We need you, Jesus. I pray for anybody that may be battling an addiction. I just pray that they would know they have their church standing alongside them, and that they have you that they can turn to as well, God. I pray for any couple in our church that may be struggling with infertility, God, that may be struggling to start a family or add to an existing one, Lord God, I just bring that before you, Jesus, because you know, you know, Lord God. We just bring these needs before you, God, and we have faith that you will answer our prayers according to your perfect will. I also bring the emotional, the mental needs of our community before you, Lord God. I pray for anybody that may be fighting a battle with depression in this room right now, God. You are a God of joy. You are not a God of sorrow. And I just pray that for anybody in this room that may be having that struggle right now, that in this moment, you would return to them the joy of your salvation, that you would just heal their heart and heal their mind, Lord God, and that they would just be so full of joy, bursting, Lord Jesus. I pray for those that may be experiencing anxiety and fear. It is such a real enemy in our world today, Lord God. But I just bind anxiety in your name. I bind fear in your name, Lord God. It has no place among God's people. And we just pray for the hearts of our church, the minds of our church to be renewed, and for us to have peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord Jesus, I also pray it is such a difficult time in our world. And I know that many in our church are having financial struggles, Lord God. And I just pray that you would be God, our provider, our Jehovah Jireh. You, in your word, you say that you take care of even the sparrows, even the lilies of the field, Lord God. You don't forget about them. And I know that you don't forget about us. So I just pray for anyone who may have lost a job, who may not be able to find one, Anybody who's anxious about rising prices, Lord God, that we would just leave that at your feet, Lord God. That we wouldn't allow those worries to take over and that you would just, we would just trust that you are God our provider and that you won't forget about us. That you've got us in the palm of your hand and you're not going to let us go, Lord God, no matter what happens. And we're just so grateful to you, God, that we can bring all of these burdens to you, Lord God. I know that there are so many more needs in our church 
that every single person here, Lord God, has something on their heart. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would touch every single heart, Lord God, that you would hear all of our prayers, Lord Jesus, as we bring them to your throne, as we run to you, Lord Jesus, as we fall into your arms of grace, God. Be with us and hear us, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. amen. At this time, we're gonna remain in an atmosphere of worship in an atmosphere of prayer here in the sanctuary. Our prayer team, they're gonna come forward and they'll be right here at the front. If God has put it on your heart to share your burden with someone else tonight, I just encourage you to do that. Come forward, these people that are gonna be here, it would be their honor to pray with you, to pray for you, and to lift you up to the Father tonight. We're just gonna stay quiet. Music is gonna continue playing. You are welcome to remain in your seat and pray on your own. But if God has put it on your heart to be prayed for, you can make your way up to the front. When you're ready, we have tea, coffee, refreshments, and an opportunity to fellowship for you in our foyer so you can make your way out to the foyer whenever you're ready. Thank you.